As you can see, our mission is serving cancer patients and serving the homeless in our community. But, however, our main mission, our focus is uplifting, is also fostering inner growth. So because of that, we have started this Sunday Awakening. We're going to be doing this every other month. We're going to be bringing speakers from different areas to help inspire us, to motivate us, and to uplift us. Doesn't that deserve a round of applause? So today, what we're here for, where I'm so excited to introduce to you this beautiful lady that we have, Katie Keaton. She, she is from originally from London. Um, she's just moved from Sp Spain, Malaga, Spain, and just moved to the States, I think, a few months ago. And we're so excited. Because she moved to the States, she's here to see us today. So I am so, so excited to have her here today. And being from Spain, she um, speaks Spanish, and she's got a really cute English accent. So, <laughs> so you got, if you get to talk to her, I'm sure you will. You'll see she's really a, a beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, and today, uh, she's come here to us as a gift from her heart to ours to offer this time her, is her donation to us. And um, the proceeds to the book that uh, any, any of you that buy the book today, the proceeds of that is going to go. She's got seven charities that uh, she's working for. So this book is going to be um, helping with that. And she is the creator of The Light, a book of wisdom. How many of you here have read the book already? Isn't it awesome? It's a beautiful book to help inspire you to bring the light within you to bring out the light in, inside of you. So I am so happy to have her here, and I'm so honored and so pleased to welcome. Let's give a big round of applause to Miss Katie <laughs> Keaton. <laughs> Just one more thing. We are going to play a, a song that was created for this book. And uh, we're going to play the song, and I want you to just listen to it and feel the words. It's before she comes up. Thank you. Will you be alone? So far away from home And emptiness has been your closest friend And his lies If you believe that this will change And you can heal your past of pain And you'll find beauty in the smallest things And they'll make you smile again Everything that you think Everything that you say in your life It becomes how you're feeling Change your heart, make it right And inside you will find In the dark of your night You'll find the light Thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this first Sunday awakening. And uh, I'm just delighted and deeply blessed to have been invited here by Pooja and her wonderful sisters um, to deliver this message, which is really important to me. And um, I have this in my heart to share with you all today. And I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be an experience, um, an experiential workshop. It's not just going to be me speaking for two hours. So, um, yeah, let's begin. And we're going to begin with something which is um, really fun. And you're all going to be handed an envelope right now. Um, everybody's going to be giving one out to you. Now, you're not supposed to open this envelope right now. So just kind of hold it. <laughs> 
to begin with. And um, when I say to open it, um, there's going to be a bit of a surprise. So just to be aware of that. <laughs> I, think you will like surprise. I think so too. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. No. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it has uh, guidelines on the front, open only when instructed. <laughs> it's really tempting to open it, isn't it? <laughs> Are you intrigued? Who's intrigued? <laughs> Good. I like that. That was the point. <laughs> Did everybody get one? Yes. Yeah? Hands up. Anyone doesn't have one? Okay. It's good. Everybody has one. So I'm going to just count you down to open it. Okay. I'm going to say three. Two, one, light. But not now. Not now. <laughs> I hear it opening. <laughs> so, like, okay, so everybody just, like, get it in your hand and, you know, start to kind of open it. Okay, now here goes. Three, two, one, light. Open it up. Open, take the card out and open it up. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's your surprise. <laughs> That's all. That, That's the big surprise. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> and that's just the beginning. <laughs> so just um, grab the butterfly that's nearest to you. So it might not be the one that actually came out of your card. It might be somebody else's butterfly. And there's a message on it for you all. Oh, you <laughs> hands up who doesn't have a butterfly. Um, okay, anybody whose hands are up? Oh, you've got one there. There's, there's a butterfly there if someone can get that one for... Everybody has to have a butterfly. It's really important. So if you haven't got one, yeah, yeah, just choose one. You have to choo choose a butterfly. Anybody else without a butterfly? Oh, they're all a bit tank. <laughs> Pooja, there's a couple more people at the back that don't have butterflies. So. so that's an individual message for all of you today from the light. Now, who, hands up who's got the blank butterfly. Has anyone got a blank one? Uh, would you please come up here? Right. <laughs> What's your name? Erica. Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi. So, come up here. <laughs> Do you want her to have a blank Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Oh, oh my <laughs> Your hair bad. Right, this is a prize for you. Um, you win a copy of the light, and also um, I'd like to take you out for a meal one night. <laughs> the, the restaurant of your choice. Oh my god. Okay, um, I mean, it had somewhere local, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you. So I'll talk to you at the end and we'll sort out all the details. Oh I look forward to having dinner with you, it'll be yes, fun. Yes. Okay. I'm very excited. So uh, you didn't get the blank one for no reason. Uh, I was just wondering, like, <laughs> and this is, um, oh, you have one. yes, I have one for you. Okay. This is yours. Thank you. <laughs> All right, awesome. thank you. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so now you've all got your um, messages. Anybody still doesn't have one? I have two. <laughs> you could share. She needs two. She needs two. Okay, so um, we're now going to do a meditation on, um, on your message that you've received today. So if you could all just close your eyes. Maybe we can get the lights. No, no. So I just want you all to relax, breathe in deeply, and then exhale on a count of three. And I'd like you to do this a few times. So inhale and exhale and relax your ankles and your feet and feel the relaxation coming up to your knees and your legs and your thighs all the way up your body so we're going to go to your stomach and your hips feel it in your wrists and your elbows up to your shoulders and your neck and your face and your eyes so you're totally relaxed now, I just want you to have the message uh, that you had on your butterfly. If you just hold that in your awareness right now, let it flutter across your mind like a beautiful white butterfly. And just see what it brings up for you as you're meditating. Uh, maybe this message, if it means something to you in your life right now, now's the time when you will get that awareness of what your message means. And also consider how this could help somebody in your life right now, whether it be yourself or somebody close to you. How your message might be an important vehicle for, for you to help them in some way. So we're just going to meditate for a couple more minutes silently and see what you get from those questions. So you're thinking about what your message means to you and how your message might be able to help somebody in your life right now. Okay, now I'd like you all to be aware of your breathing again. Come back into the here and now, back in your chairs. And uh, if you just like to all open your eyes and come back to the present. Can we get the lights back on? <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, so they, they hurt the eyes after being in the dark. Um, okay, so I hope you all got something from that and you all felt something and you got the answers to the questions. And we're just going to do something now. I just want you all to get a partner. Um, now, there's some rows of five, which might be a bit of an issue. Um, so if you all just turn to the person next to you, and you can also do it in threes. It's okay to do that as well. Um, 
So you can have a three, and one of you is going to be partner A, the other one's going to be partner B. Um, if you're in a three, then two of you will be partner B, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> I can't think of any other way to do it. So, I mean, if you can get into partners, then that's great. But I'm just looking at the chair structure, and I'm thinking that might be hard. So, um, behind, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. So, if you will just find your partner, and then, yeah, you can just match, match up together. And if there's anybody, so if you will just now make eye contact with somebody else and uh, find who your partner is. <laughs> If you all <laughs> if, it, if it comes to it, then um, you know one of you could be a partner. Yeah, if it's yeah, in a minute. Yeah, not right now. Yeah. So. Is there anybody who doesn't have a partner? Anybody? Anybody who doesn't have a partner? No? Oh, yeah, in a minute. Yeah, when I do them. Okay. Todos tienen su pareja para hacer esto. Sí. Me levanta la mano. Is it Does everybody have a partner? Does everyone have a partner? Anybody who doesn't have a partner? Anyone who doesn't have a partner? No tiene pareja? Sorry, I'm doing your job now. I, I know a little bit. So everyone has a partner. Yay! That's cool. Okay, so um, partner A. Okay, so decide who partner A and partner B. You have to decide who's A and who's B. That's the next step. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is partner A, okay, partner A is going to uh, tell partner B the answers to those questions that we did in meditation. So just share with your partner the message of your butterfly, you know, what, your, what the message means to you right now. Um, and how it might be able to help somebody in your life, whether it's yourself or someone close to you. So just share with each other those things. Yeah, so, so look. Is do or yours? Your. Um, it says, listen to, your. trust your intuition. It's your spirit whispering directions. Ah, I didn't read it like that. I didn't understand. Oh. Okay, so I think has to read it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I, should, maybe I should explain that. Well, I, I, apparently, I am the only one. <laughs> what did mine say? Yours says, the divine resides in the unknown the unknown. until it is known. Until it is known. That's the divine spirit, the one force. Before I get, it gets crazy here, I want to give you one of our medication bags. Okay, thank you. Like you I'll take that we're, home. We're out, we're out toward the island. Oh, brilliant. So you, thank you. Yes, oh. Gail knows me very well, too. Gail and... Oh, I met Gail. Yeah, yes, she's helping yes, out. Yes. She's lovely. Thanks for that. Um, who, who's partner A? So you've got to tell, you've got to tell them. You have to tell them. 
Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I hope you can all read the butterflies okay. My handwriting is not the best. <laughs> I think some people are just, because it's like twists like that. It's like and then they don't realize it's like that. <laughs> what does this mean? Your greatest teacher, your greatest teacher, is unaware that he she is ever teaching. It's even. No, that's even. 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 Yeah. See, my handwriting's not really that good. It sometimes comes out a bit funny. Yeah. Is that your one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened to mine. <laughs> oh. Went somewhere. Um, this was awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so partner. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, because we need to change over now. So partner B. Okay, can we have your attention, please? Can we have your attention, please? If you can all quiet down. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to uh, switch over, so the partner B, or B's, if there's two of you, um, then tell your message to your partner. Okay, so they're sharing, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to finish up with that now. So just uh, finish up telling your messages to okay, each other. <laughs> what, this one not working? It's working, but... Okay, if we're going to all quieten down now and then we just go on to the next. So, you've all shared your messages with each other, so I hope that was cool. I hope you enjoyed it. And is there anybody who would like to share your, uh, your message and what it means to you with, with the whole audience? Is there anybody who is really touched and would really like to to share that with everyone? Okay, great. What's your name? Yolanda. My name is Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Every day we should be grateful for everything we have in order to accept what the Lord has sent to us. Gratitude. That's the most important thing. Amen. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, we have a, uh, a church down in Cameron County. What's your name, sorry? Oh, Dr. Roberta Dong. I'm with okay. um, the Energy Meditation Center and Church of Divine Spirit. And we're down in Cameron. And so we're trying to organize something like this. Okay. And sometimes I get very, very depressed because McAllen is very well organized. And down where I come from, it's like pulling teeth. And so it's like the other day I was very discouraged. We have these meditations. They're for free. Nobody shows up. You know, <laughs> and so I just said, look, Lord, I just, you know, I don't know what to do. And so I got this message the other day that Prabhupada came to me from the Krishna thing and said, I came to New York in 1960. I had nothing, nothing. 
and I sat in a room and I started the Krishna organization. And sometimes you have to just have faith, let it go, know that that God's there, and that don't worry about outcomes. Just every time a negative thought, I have abundance. Everything's gonna be fine. I have abundance. So we're gonna change yes. Cameron County. And you know, just not get into that negative kind of like, I'm a failure, I'm not gonna do it. If one person could start Krishna consciousness, and then when that temple got built over here for the Hindus, and I go there, hail Shiva, you know, I mean, we go there, and I think it's wonderful. So what was, your, what was your message? I mean, what, that what I should cooperate and never get up. Cooperate with what the divine spirit gives me right. and never get up. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else? Anybody else that would like to share their message? We maybe... Hi, my name is Juanita. Hi, Juanita. Hi. And my message was that believe today is going to be a fabulous day. And as long as we believe, it will be. And I think the message I got from that was, besides being a fabulous day, you have to believe that you're in the right place. You have to believe that God is working in your life. You have to believe that you're the person that he wants you to be. be yeah. And believe that he's going to put people in your path. So it's all about faith and believing. What does that mean in your life right now for you personally? Right now I have had uh, devastating finances happen and I just have to believe that he is going to turn all that around for me and, and repair those finances. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe one more. We'll, we'll do one more. One. Oh, cool. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah. Uh, since a, a gentleman or a male gender has been stood up and said I'm doing it. Mine simply said that wisdom whispers. And. Uh, <laughs> It's oh, no, still flying. Uh, it says, uh, true wisdom only whispers, uh, doesn't shout it, can you hear it? True wisdom doesn't shout it, only whispers, can you hear it? So to me that meant, um, what I think about a lot of times is, you know, quiet your mind, quiet yourself, and then, then wisdom starts to seep into your, to your heart, into your soul, into your mind. Yeah. And is there anything in your life right now where you feel like you need that wisdom to come in? Uh, I, the other side, I was telling my beautiful wife, the other side of what this butterfly meant to me was at times I'm constantly wanting to share the wisdom. Yeah. And sometimes I feel, I kind of dance with the notion that sometimes it's, it's, it's more just to stay quiet and be it than to shout it out and be saying it because sometimes, you know, for whatever reason it's Subtle. Hard, hard to digest or something. Yeah. So just quiet down and, and be it, I guess is the other part of what I felt. Okay, great, so, thank as, you. As far as needing it or anything, yes, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm constantly always trying to be light and just be in the moment, being in the now. So. Yeah, and I love your t-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> so bright. That was great for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so you might be wondering why the butterflies and, you know, what all that means. Well, um, as Alka... Not Malka, right? Alka introduced me. Uh, you know, she mentioned that I'm the creator of this book called The Light. And for those who already have a copy, you'll notice that there's a white butterfly above the eye of the book. Mm -hmm. um, that's really my, my sign, and it's been my sign throughout putting together this book. Um, I mean, it's just incredible the amount of synchronicities that have happened with white butterflies. Um, I could go on and talk for hours about this, but I'm just going to keep it brief. Um, I would see white butterflies everywhere. And on the cover of the book, originally it was a heart that was above the letter I. It wasn't a butterfly. And I kept looking at it and thinking that there's something wrong with this cover. It's not looking right. It's not, I don't know what this heart thing is, but it's not calling to me. Um, it looked like a greetings card or something, you know? And I just felt there was something not right about it. 
So I asked um, for a sign about what I should do to improve the cover of the book. And one uh, morning I woke up from a deep sleep and I was kind of in that state where you're between sleeping and being awake. And I, this huge swarm of white butterflies was in my awareness. It was absolutely beautiful. And as soon as I woke up, I just knew from that moment on, that's what is missing from the front cover. It's a white butterfly. And I sort of meditated on it a little bit. Um, and then I realized that a white butterfly represents transformation, freedom. Um, it represents purity. To me, it represents spirit. And I just really, I just was so grateful to the universe in that moment of realizing that this, is, this has been my sign. And since I sort of committed to putting the butterfly on the book, um, I would see white butterflies everywhere I went, absolutely everywhere. It was just incredible. Um, not just butterflies as in the flying butterflies, but I would see them on, on cakes. I'd see them in shop windows. <laughs> I'd see them... Um, as I was walking along the beach, this was, a, this was incredible. I was walking along the beach to the lighthouse um, in, in Spain where I used to live and a white butterfly su suddenly just started flying in front of me, leading me to the lighthouse and it would go a little way and then it would stop on a pebble and then it would go a little bit further and stop at another pebble and that would just keep happening all the way to the lighthouse. And this was when I was in the process of putting this book together, which happens to be called The Light. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think it's just for me a sign that the universe is, is always talking to us. It's always telling us what we need to know. And we just have to kind of listen and be aware of, of what we're seeing, um, what we're feeling, what shows up in our life. The answers are all there. Um, another thing that I'd like to share with you... Um, is that I would also see another sign that I had was the numbers 33. Um, I would see these numbers in the most bizarre places, but they would just show up everywhere. I mean, how many people have had the experience of seeing 1 1 or 1 1 1 1, 2 2? <laughs> yeah, I mean, these numbers, like, they, they mean, um, you know, they all have different specific meanings, but genu generally they mean that we're on the right path. Our masters are with us, um, our guides and our angels are with us, and they're helping us um, to get through whatever it is that, that we have right then to get through. So these numbers, with the numbers and the butterflies combined, I just sort of knew that I was on the right path by doing this book. And everything just fell into place beautifully. Um, you know, there's 22 contributors in the book, um, many of whom are well-known, um, I know some of you have already seen Neil Donald Walsh speak. So, you know, I managed to get him into the book, which was incredible. I mean, he's a very busy man. Um, and something else that's taught me doing this book is the difference between action and inspired action. Um, I mean, we tend to be human doings, not human beings. And we tend to try and just do too much and we think that it's the doing that gets us where we are when actually it's the being that gets us where we are so that's been a massive lesson for me throughout this book um, for example with Neil Donald Walsh uh, I was in the middle of doing something completely different right then a completely different task I was working on and it suddenly just landed in my head you have to contact Neil Donald Walsh about being in the book and a lot of us might at that time, me included, would have said, you know, I'm going to do that later because I'm busy with this right now. Um, and there's no way I'm going to stop what I'm doing. But this time I decided differently. And so I did stop what I was doing completely. And I emailed, I found Neil's um, email address on his website. And I just emailed him straight away in that moment. And Neil then got back to me within 20 minutes and he said, I'd be delighted to be in your book. Wow. And my heart was like bursting. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I w that was just an incredible moment, an en upsurge of energy. It was like I learned in that moment, that, you know, the difference between those two things, the action and the inspired action. Um, 
so I think that's just a great lesson for us all to take home today. Um, if we, if you, something that you want to accomplish or something you want to achieve, it's not about the doing, it's about the being. And about when we're in that state of beingness, the things that come to us in those moments are the real things that matter. And yes, you know, you have to take action on them. So it's not about not doing anything, but it's about doing the right things at the right times. So, um, you know, and I've carried that lesson with me now throughout the book, and it's the way that a lot of the authors ended up in it. Um, it would always be at those moments when I knew that now's the time to contact them. It was almost like a download of information that came to me in that moment, and I just always acted on it. Um, and I owe that now to the universe that these 22 people have come together uh, to unite in the light. So that's the... Uh, you know, how the book manifested. It's all thanks to the, the signs of the universe. So I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you a bit now about my story, um, how the book came together in the first place. I was uh, living in Spain at the time and um, I had a magazine uh, that I brought out for the expat community. There's lots of Brits that live in Spain. They all kind of like hate the cold weather <laughs> um, and they so they all go to Spain it's only a couple of hours flight so it's not too far it's easy to get back and forth so this magazine that I brought out was for the expat community and that came about in a really strange way as well but I'm not going to tell you that story today um, I was doing that for two years and I finally felt like I wasn't living my purpose I mean, I was grateful for the opportunity, but I felt like there was something missing inside me. And I think we can all relate to that sometimes when we're going through life and we just feel that like there's something missing. Well, that's exactly how it felt to me. A lot of my friends thought I had the perfect life. I was living, uh, you know, just across the road from a beautiful beach, uh, living in Spain where it's hot and sunny for 320 days of the year. Um, I had you know, my own business, I was an author, I'd written my first book by that point, yet there was still something inside of me that wasn't fulfilled and I wasn't happy. And, um, I mean, actually now, the way I, I see things now is, um, it's not the things of matter that matter. It's everything else <laughs> outside of the material. So that's something that I've learned, but... The way that I got there was a long journey. Um, so I started feeling really depressed at this time. And I would often, you know, curl up on my sofa. I'd be crying for hours on end. I just really yearned to know what I was here for and my purpose. And one day, this went on for months, literally, maybe six months, seven months. One day I just felt I can't actually feel any lower. I think I've hit rock bottom. And from that moment, there was only one way I could really go. So I became very present within myself, and I literally looked up and I asked God for a sign. Um, I even spoke the words aloud. I was on my own at the time, so it wasn't like I was mad or anything. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have probably got some funny looks if I'd been out in public, but I did it in the privacy of the home. And I said, God, please, could you give me a sign? You know, I'm, I'm here for something and I want to know what it is. Please, can you tell me? Please give me a sign now. I directed this not only at God, but my angels, my guides. I directed it at any of my deceased relatives. Um, anyone I knew that was up there that might be able to help me. And after I, that happened, I let it go completely. I just got on with life. I still didn't feel too good. But I uh, carried on with life anyway. And 24 hours later, or less, I can't remember the precise timing, I was walking along the street and I picked up a magazine from a shelf outside a shop that I've never picked up before. And I don't think I would have picked that magazine up had it not been for the day before and what happened. Because there was something about that magazine that just attracted me to it. It was like it was shining at me, pick me up, pick me up. So I did pick it up, I looked through it, and an advert caught my attention uh, called the Mind Body Spirit Festival, which it was based about an hour away from where I lived. And I'd always been interested in spirituality, but I'd never been that interested to go to a festival. 
But there was something about this advert, a bit like the magazine, where I thought, I have to go to that. Whatever happens, I must go to that festival. So I did. I went along and, um, you know, I met some incredible people there. But the key to all of that was right at the end, just as I was about to go home, I met this man called Richard Waterbourne, who's a, um, he calls himself a cellular healer. Cellular being the cells of the body. And he told me a bit about what he did, a bit about his practice. And I just knew in that moment that I had to go and see him and have some cellular healing sessions. I didn't know what it entailed, but I just felt to go. I just felt a very strong inner urge. So um, I did. I went to the sessions. Um, I think I had about seven or eight in total. And really amazing things happened. Um, in my first session, my whole body was convulsing for about two hours. That wasn't so amazing, <laughs> but that was like just the beginning. But it was um, really, I mean, it was, um, it was amazing in the sense that, wow, what's going on here? You know, I didn't know that that can happen to people. Like, I wasn't doing anything. I was just breathing, literally breathing and being aware of myself. Um, Richard was guiding me a little bit. How can my body be convulsing like this? Um, I was actually releasing trauma that had been stored in my body's cells for the last 13 years. It was all releasing through me. And at the same time, I was sweating a lot. Um, I'd go from hot to cold. Um, now, after that session, my whole life changed completely. After that very first session, it was um, just incredible the things that happened after that. Um, I got home from that session. I'd been there for, I'd been home about an hour and I actually went to sleep because I was so exhausted. And as I was waking up, I heard my name whispered in my ear, like, Kaidi, like really loud. I mean, it sounded like somebody was actually in the room talking in my ear. And I had no explanation for this. I thought, well, that's weird. How can there be somebody whispering in my ear when there's no one here? It was just so bizarre to me. But that was just the beginning of it all, because after that, more things started to happen. Um, I had a number of spiritual experiences where I would see spirit, I would be hear spirit, feel spirit, um, until one day, or one night actually, I saw a big ball of light in my bedroom. It was like a... I can't even do how big it was because my arms aren't big enough, but it was a really big sphere of light, brilliant white light, and this ball of light was just right there in my room, and I knew it was a man, even though he obviously couldn't really tell. It was just a feeling, a vibrational sense. This was a, a man energy. And he's tried to tell me something. Um, his voice was very muffled. I mean, it's like, I don't know if you know, like if you're trying to tune into a certain radio station and you can't quite get the right station, you have to hear that muffled sound. Well, that's what he sounded like. So I obviously wasn't tuned in properly, you know, quite adequately to catch his message. But I could very much tell that he had a voice and he was talking to me. And I also knew that he was telling me something very important, but I just couldn't catch it. So he then obviously gave up because he then backed out of my, <laughs> backed out of my bedroom bit by bit and vanished. And... It was the very next day I was eating dinner, something quite mundane, really, um, and this, this idea just came into my head. It just landed in my head, almost, um, that I had to bring out a book, and this book was going to help people to reawaken their light. And it was such a strong message that I just couldn't ignore it. And I'm convinced now that that's what the ball of light had wanted to tell me. Um, so I, I couldn't ignore this message. I mean, it just felt so strong that I had to do this. So, um, and also the other thing that the message said was, this book has to be 100% for charity. And my head couldn't equate with that. I was like, no, <laughs> I don't think that that's going to happen. I mean, I need to live, you know. I need food. I need, I need like, my basic living things covered. How am I going to do all this for charity? But I tried to do it half for charity, and it just wasn't happening. 
You know, it was just like a wall. It's like nobody was getting back to my emails. No one was returning my calls. It was like, no, this isn't happening. Okay, okay, I surrender. I, I will do it all for charity. So I, I did. I changed it all. I wrote back to these people and said, hmm, now, you know, I, but well, I didn't actually change much of the message. And they all then started coming back to me and saying, yes, we'd be delighted to contribute to your book. So um, it was about me listening to my intuition in the first place, knowing that this is what I've been told to do. So, you know, lis listen within and, and do, what that, do what that feels for you. Um, and after that, um, again, it, incredible experiences happened beyond that. And the book finally came together after two and a half years. It took a lot of my life. Um, and it's now the book that some of you are holding in your hands, for those who have one. Hold, hands up who has a copy of the book or who, who's read it. OK, there's lots of lights out there. So, so yeah, so that's the finished product. Um, and I mean, since doing this and, and since embarking on this journey, um, I've learned so many lessons as a result of putting the book together. I've learned incredible things, um, one of which is always follow the things that come on salt. I mean, I, with this book and when it came to the marketing, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. I thought, OK, I need to spread the word of this book. I can go on social media, I can go on the internet, I can do all these things which take time and energy. And to begin with, I was doing all that. But then a very wise friend of mine, my spiritual teacher, she gave me that very advice. She said, Kaidi, follow the things that come unsought. And so I listened and I thought, OK, there's some truth in that sentence. Didn't quite know what it was, but I knew that there was some wisdom or truth in it. So. About a week later, um, I got an email from Pooja. <laughs> and Pooja invited me to, to come and, and speak here, now. <laughs> um, and that was, for me, that was amazing because I've never wanted to be a speaker. I've never even considered doing that. There's something actually which I probably would have, about two years ago, I would have said, no way am I doing that. Never. That's not for me. <laughs> Yet here I am now, enjoying every moment of it, loving speaking to you all. And um, what happened is, after I got that email from Pooja, I then got three other emails within two weeks, inviting me to come and speak at different events. And I have not tried to get any speaking events. And so for me, that's like magical. It's like, I don't have to, again, it comes back to the, you are not the doer. You don't have to do anything in order for these things to come. You just have to trust and know that it's all perfect. And if God wants to lead you down a certain path, you're going to go down that path, whatever happens. Whether you like it or not, you're going down that path. And you're going to get signs that know that you're going to go down that path. And you will just know within yourself, now's the time, now's the time to do it. I mean, I was actually invited... Two years ago, I was invited to speak at two different events in Spain, and I turned both of them down. I said, well, no, I made up some excuses, like I was too busy or, you know, all those things our mind comes up with. Uh, I just didn't want to do it. I didn't think it was my future. Uh, I now understand it was Spirit's way of preparing me for, for all this and what's to come. Um, because I know that that's part now of my future, and... You know, I just think that for all of you here now, just that's an incredible lesson which I think uh, we can all take with us is just to remember that, that God will point you in the right direction. Thank you. Yeah. So um, now I just want to tell you one more thing. <laughs> um, this is going back to the butterflies. Um, I was looking online um, about a week ago. I left it to the last minute because I often do that. But I was looking for the right outfit to wear today. You know, I wanted a nice dress, like something simple, not too kind of, just simple. And I really, I wanted white, actually. I want, this isn't really white, this is beige. But I wanted like pure white. 
And uh, I was like, I went all over the shops in some valley where, I, where I'm living, and there was nothing. They were all like $200 for some little thing. And I thought, no. <laughs> and also, they just weren't my kind of style or anything. I just didn't see anything. So I decided that I was going to go online and look. Um, and so I, I went online. I typed in white dresses, and so many white dresses came up that it was incredible. It was like, you know, too many. An abundance of white dresses. There were hundreds of them. And I thought, I don't know which one I'm going to choose. Like, I can't really tell online. I need to order them and try them all on. But of course, I wasn't <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> that would have been difficult. So I decided, um, I saw one that I really liked. And it was, um, you know, it had 33 in the price, which for me was, you know, a sign. <laughs> it was my 33. <laughs> And the other thing was, um, so, I, you know, I ordered this dress. I just thought, okay, that's the one. I'm going to order it. Now, you know when you order something online and you get, like, a confirmation email to tell you all about it, you know, that it's coming? Well, on that confirmation email, I then noticed what the name of the dress was. It was called the butterfly dress. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, yeah, the butterfly dress. I have to say, this, this actually isn't the butterfly dress, okay? But that wasn't the point. The point was that it was a sign that, yes, you're supposed to go and do this talk today. I actually ruined the butterfly dress earlier because I got all makeup on it when I was like, I was kind of like trying a few things on, <laughs> seeing which one I preferred. And then I took that one off and I noticed, oh my God, I've got makeup all over it. So that one, you know. The poor butterfly dress <laughs> has to be cleaned now. So, yeah, it's <laughs> but it's all good. So um, I hope you don't mind this dress. <laughs> this was like the substitute dress. So <laughs> this one's not called butterfly. <laughs> I'll give you a twelve. <laughs> so um, how, how are we doing for time, Pooja? Okay, maybe do that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think we're all going to have um, a break right now, and I'm going to continue talking after, telling you a bit more. <laughs>